everyone. Happy Sunday, fun day. If you are new, hello, my name is Erin. It's so nice to meet you. I have been in such a good mood this week. It is insane. Put it this way, look at my hand. Cracked, missing, broken. And I don't even care. That's how good of a mood I am in. My nails look like trash hooker and I am okay with that. We hosted our first Friendsgiving last night, so I thought this would be a great opportunity for me to share with you some do's and don'ts. My husband and I are in our first year of marriage. We are in our first home together. So it was just time to start some new traditions together in our new house. So Friendsgiving is the first tradition and it went so well. It wouldn't be a YouTube video if there wasn't a shameless plug. So follow me on Instagram at Erin Heartbreak or you can subscribe to my channel down below. It's just the red subscribe button. Besides that, we're gonna get right into these do's and don'ts. I'm gonna start with the don'ts just because there's less of them and I figure get the negatives out of the way. But the first is do not stress. So typically I stress about everything, the little things. I'm the kind of person that's a constant planner. So if I work something out in my head, that is how it needs to happen. But that wasn't the case. If I'm ever hosting something, I think I'm so prepared that I don't get to the point where I do stress out. All week my husband was like coaching me or texting me, don't stress out, don't worry about it. And I wasn't. It was kind of like he was already prepared for me to stress out, but I wasn't stressing out. So do not worry because if something happens that you can't control, it's, it's just gonna happen. That's how life is. Put it this way. Yesterday, my husband left the house and I'm home alone with the dog and all of a sudden our carbon monoxide detector starts going off. At first, Callie and I are looking at each other like, what the hell is going on? And she's absolutely losing her mind because of how loud the noise is. So I'm trying to look at it. It's flashing all kinds of numbers. So I'm freaking out. If you're from New England, you probably heard about the really bad gas explosions that happened up in Boston. People died, their houses blew up. It was really bad. I know carbon monoxide and natural gas are completely different things, but that just happened super recently. So I was a little bit heightened, but I kept my calm. So I called the town fire department. I threw on a coat and I went outside with my dog and <laughs> Of course, a fire truck came came to my house and there was like a dozen police officers. <sighs> so dramatic and it happened at the same time my turkey was done. So it was just like, great, I'm about to have six people come to my house and my husband's not home and uh, I don't know. Obviously it's scary, plus you could just be dying and not even know it. So that was a little scary, but again, it's something that I couldn't control. I took the necessary steps and it was cleared, everything was fine, but there's just those things in life where you cannot control what might happen, so do not stress about them. Another thing that was um, not too intelligent on my behalf is probably shouldn't go out the night before. So I had an event and I had a couple drinks. So the next morning I was dragging. It definitely wasn't my worst hangover, but it wasn't the best mindset or mood to be in when you have to prepare pretty large meal and host. I did power through it just because I was so happy to be hosting, but you might not want to go out drinking the night before you are hosting a very big dinner party. My last don't is do not let dishes pile up. This can be super easy, especially with before dinner drinks, appetizers, dinner, all the serving dishes, warming things up, utensils, they just pile up. And you wanna make sure that you are staying on top of them. You don't want your guests to feel like they have to hang around and help you clean up. That's part of your job when you're hosting is to clean it up yourself. So just make sure you're actively tag teaming things and taking away plates when people are done or if they're switching over from wine or just on water, just make sure you're constantly clearing and cleaning because you don't want people to leave at midnight and then you're washing dishes until two o'clock in the morning. It's a pain in the butt. Now we are on to the do's of hosting your first Friendsgiving. So I kind of just touched upon this, but drinks. You're going to want to have drinks for before dinner, during dinner, and after dinner. For us, we were serving mixed drinks before dinner. So I love whiskey. Jameson is my absolute favorite, so I love an Irish mule. My husband and his best friend love just regular mules. So we made sure that our before dinner drink was focused around what everyone likes. 
Mules are super easy, they're fun, you can have the little copper mugs that you can get super cheap at TJ Maxx, but it's just kind of nice to have a featured cocktail and it's super simple to make. During dinner, we served wine. It's just kind of a custom to drink wine with dinner. We did have an assortment of red wines and white wines for our guests, which is really important to not just cater to yourself, but others' needs as well. As far as the after dinner drinks go, you wanna make sure you have coffee. We served cappuccinos and espressos, and then we also had after dinner liqueurs. We had Grand Marnier, we had Bainal, if you're Portuguese, you know what that is. There's just stuff like that that you wanna make sure that you can offer to your guests. I'm not saying to go out and buy six different liqueurs and cognacs for after dinner, but as long as you have some coffee and something to sip on afterwards, you're gonna be okay. I really wanted to have these, but I didn't get them. I don't know why, it is what it is, but leftover containers. Honestly, there was so much food at our house that I'm already planning two different meals to try and make with the leftovers. It's just a lot. So it's easier if you do have leftover containers to just kind of like force your guests to take some stuff home because you don't want all that food that you and they made to go to waste. Another thing you definitely want to do is just ask for help. This was my first turkey I ever made. I am so proud of it. If we're friends, I'm probably going to be talking about this turkey for the next three months. Honestly, cleaning out the turkey, knowing how to marinate it, knowing how to prepare it, knowing how to cook it, it's, it's a lot. Like I think there's a reason why people only cook turkey once a year because it is not an easy task. So I was constantly asking different people for how they do everything and I just kind of took the most popular from everyone and mushed them all together and it came out really well. So do not be afraid to ask for help. You can also ask your guests to bring dishes. This is really easy. Most of the time they're just gonna offer anyways, but there's no need for you to prepare five sides of the main dish and all the desserts and supply all of the liquor. It's never gonna happen. You don't need to go broke to have your friends over for dinner. They'll be happy to help because they want people to enjoy what they're making as well. So these go hand in hand because it's under cleaning, but you wanna make sure that you pick up your house. It doesn't matter if people won't be going in your guest room, you never know. Like, you never know what room people are going to be going into, so just pick up the house, run the vacuum, like do a really good clean leading up to that whole week. The other thing you wanna do is clean out your refrigerator. People are going to be bringing dishes over, you're going to be cooking a lot of stuff, and you wanna have room. Lucky for us, we have two refrigerators, so we didn't have to worry that much. Clean them out and make space because your fridge is about to be packed with leftovers once everyone leaves. My last absolute do is prepare ahead of time. I think this is honestly why I was so lax going into yesterday. So I had made sweet potato casserole and the turkey. The turkey I started thawing on Wednesday. I cleaned it on Thursday. It was brining on Thursday. Friday I marinated it and then Saturday I cooked it. So if you're gonna show up to the grocery store on Friday and buy a frozen turkey to make for Saturday, you're SOL. Like, <laughs> it's never gonna work out. You have to be prepared for what you are going to be doing. Make lists. It's just going to be a lot easier to tackle and time that day if you are prepared. Okay, everyone, that is going to wrap up my do's and don'ts of hosting your first friend's giving. But I do appreciate you guys watching and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye, everyone.